Okay. Um, good evening. This talk is called Stargate an Interstellar Journey to RESTful APIs. My name is Juan Escalada. I'm a software developer at Markup Software. And the agenda for today is so we organize a little what we'll be seeing is we'll do a small intro where I explain a little about the framework. We'll go through the features that the framework offers to you and why it would be interesting to have them. We're going to see a little of how the architecture of the, soft, of the framework ends up resolving the requests, a small demo, and then we'll end the talk. So first of all, what is Stargate? Stargate is a framework for building RESTful APIs, uh, obviously. Is open source and is under an MIT license, so you can see it on the BAST Stargate uh, BAST repositories on GitHub. Uh, you can use it and you can even collaborate if you want. Um, is a framework that is built on top of Sync and Tipot. So you might be wondering, why don't you use, use Tipot? It's a framework that allows you to build APIs fairly simple. So when we started building uh, services that use APIs, uh, Tipot was enough. But as the product started to grow, and we started to have more endpoints, support more methods, and need uh, a, a more robust framework, we found out that there were a bunch of features that were missing. And the tipot syntax uh, becomes really verbose if you have too many methods. So uh, Stargate is developed as a response to this. So before we start with Stargate, we're going to go a little over what is a REST architecture. REST is an, a system architecture designed for uh, building distributed systems. Uh, it's mostly used on the web, but the architecture does, is not restricted to HTTP or web-based uh, developments. Its principles are that it should be a client-server architecture. It's stateless, which means that on each request, you have to prov provide all the information that you need to resolve that request. It's, uh, it should be cacheable, which means that you should not go to the server to get information that you already re requested. It should have a uniform interface. A uniform interface has four principles. The resources should be uniquely identifiable. Uh, the change to the resources should be made through representation. The messages should be self-descriptive, that we already have that with the method that REST provides, the get, the post, options, etc. And it should be compliant with HTTPS. I'm not really sure if that's how it's pronounced, but I'll go with it. Uh, HTTPS is an abbreviation for hypermedia as the engine of a of an of application state. I'm sorry. And the idea is that you should not know beforehand uh, how is the complete API structure. You should be able to discover it on, on the fly. Just after you do your first request, you, the response should guide you on how to keep flowing through the API. OK. Well, before we start with the features, I'll explain a little bit about the example that 
you will see on the different slides, so to avoid confusion. It's a simple pet store that is the canonical example for REST APIs. It's got two endpoints. One is to uh, manage the pets, and other is to manage the orders of adoption. And these are the supported media types for the example application. Just to get that out of the way. OK. Features that Stargate provides. It provides content negotiation, which we'll see a little bit. All of these features we'll see a little bit in more uh, inside uh, in a little while. But just to mention them, it provides uh, support for hey to us, uh, caching control. It's got uh, two features that were added recently that are health checks, a health check API, and a metrics, uh, a health check and a metric endpoints. Uh, it provides error handling, course handling, and pagination for the responses. So content negotiation. Content negotiation means that the API should provide different, uh, or at least it should respond with the more appropriate uh, media type for what you are asking for. So the API will manage your request with the accept uh, media type that you define and find the most suitable response for what you are asking. If you ask for an, a specific version of the, of the resource, it will bring that if it's available. If not, if you ask for anything, it would bring um, the latest uh, and most common version of the, of the resource and so on. If you don't ask for a version, it will always be the last one. And if you ask for a resource that is not provided, it will give a 406 response, not acceptable. So well, here we are more of the same. If we, you ask for the version 2, it will be the last of the version 2. If you ask for version 1 in this example, you'll see that it's the version 1.1. One, one. OK. So. Hey to us. Uh, to provide uh, support for hey to us, we on the there is no not an an standard for this. So this is the the implementation that we decided, and it's that we provide the uh, with the response links to the different actions that you can do on this API. In this example, when you ask, you generate an order to adopt a particular pet, the status of the order is registered, and it has several actions uh, attached, in this case, to complete the order or to cancel it. And it always will respond with a link to self, which is and a unique, uh, a unique access to that specific resource. Caching control. So the caching control on Stargate is done using etax. With this, uh, which it, with each response that you get, you'll get an etax that serves as a way to guarantee that the resource that you have is valid. So anytime you need to do an action with that resource, you can check if the resource is valid. If it's not valid, it will ask you to uh, request it again. And if it's valid, the uh, request that you're doing will be performed the way you want to. So, Sorry. OK. Yes, it's just that. It was short. Well, for error handling, 
the Stargate framework provides a global error handler that will manage all the requests uh, directly. So if you request uh, with a structure that is wrong or an endpoint that does not exist or is some conflict, it will give the appropriate responses. And over this handler, you can add several handlers of your own to handle specific cases and give responses in custom ways. Then we got a metrics endpoint. The metrics endpoint, the idea is to gather information of how, to, how your application is running. And this is a, a, plugin, a plugin feature. It's by default, it's not enabled, but it's a simple configuration. It provides an endpoint where you do a simple get, and it, uh, at this moment, it brings you uh, memory metrics, uh, the state of garbage collection on your system, and running information for it. We also have the health check endpoint. The health check uh, is pretty similar to the metrics one, but it's for a general status of the application. If it's running correctly, if it has found um, some error but can keep running, or even if the application is not responding anymore, it's got three states, which are a pass, warning for when something's wrong but the application can keep running, and fail when the application is out of order. And okay, so the architecture. For the architecture, we got uh, the class that defined how we how we start our API is HTTP based RESTful API. You just instantiate and pass the controllers that it will be using. Uh, we'll see that an, an example later. And this uh, HTTP-based RESTful API is built on top of Sync and Teapot. Sync acts as a server to, to send and receive the requests. Teapot provides all the managing for the routes. Then the RESTful API of Stargate manages the controllers and the and how to handle the errors. So basically, from left to right, you receive an HTTP request through sync. Tpot defines to which controller it must go from the endpoint that is managing. Then the, the controller pass it to the request handler, and it de defines if it's an error or it should have a correct response and it does all the same work backwards and back through the sync server to the solicitant. Okay. Well, we'll do a little demo. Okay. Here we have an HTTP-based RESTful IPA that we'll be instantiating. Um, it's not a really consistent example because it has the pet examples and a different IPA to manage currencies, but it's just for show. You would have coherent controllers on your application, but we'll, we're starting this on localhost on port 999, and it's as simple as install and start. Yeah. So first, we'll be Seeing localhost 999 currencies. See, this is an API that uses. Uh, oh, sorry. There we are. Okay, this is an API built uh, not following all the principles of REST. It's a common API without headers and nothing. So we see that we can ask for the currencies, and 
we don't know nothing else if we haven't read the uh, documentation for the API. So there's no way to deduce, for example, that if we want to know a particular currency, you have to type the ISO code. Yeah. Or if, for example, you want to see the banknotes for this currency in particular, you had to enter the banknote endpoint on that particular currency. There's no way to know it beforehand. So it was just to show how it feels. When you don't know the API, you haven't read the documentation, and the API is not giving you feedback on how to work it. So on the other hand, well, we got the pets API. At this moment, it's got nothing. So I'm going to start a little client. And we'll do some requests. In this case, we're going to be sending to localhost 999 on our endpoint. Where do I have the endpoint? Ah, oh, here. Sorry. To the pet endpoint, we're going to be sending a request with a JSON media type of the first version to set to two pets. We'll just do this. OK, I'll do it again. There it is. So we get a response. The response gives us the state that the request with which the request was processed. We get headers with all the information from who is responding to us, a sync server on Faro 7, and or ETAG for consistency. And the contents is the the result of the resource that was created. In this case, we can see that it's, it's not formatted, but we get a dog, and it has its links. So obviously, we can see this here. If we enter again, we got a few dogs already uh, charged. And if we want to see one in particular, we can enter to its uh, resource identification, and you can have that one resource in particular. So for the orders API, we're going to be, OK, we're going to close this. And we're going to create an order. Yes? We're going to be. Uh, requesting the orders API with uh, the information that it requires. It's just a date and the pet that we want to adopt. And again, we get the response yeah, with its headers and the, the complete resource. Yeah. And in this case, as I showed in the example explanation, the, the orders API doesn't have a get for all. So we'll start directly on the self resource of the order we created. And we can see that besides the self representation, it's got a several different actions that we could do. Uh, we can do it directly from here, from the browser, or we can do them from from sync. It's as simple. We'll do it directly in Faro, just for fun. And I don't want to complete it. I will cancel the order in this case, just to avoid losing a little of time. The response is a 204, no content, and it was the, it's a 204, so it worked well. And now, if we enter to the same resource, you, you can see now that it is on status registered, and it's got several actions. The uh, resource should have changed dynamically. And now, it does not have the other actions available. 
So you can still request them, but it will bring back an error response because they're not action, valid actions anymore, and the status is canceled. Um, now, that's a little what I want, wanted to show. So we'll come back to the, uh, to the slides. So conclusions. Uh, what is this target good for? It's good if you want to drive an hypermedia driven IPA. So using hey to us is really simple with Stargate and it allows to really interesting flows of, of information with the APIs. If you need advanced content negotiation, so if you wanna uh, provide very variated uh, types, media types on your responses, or if you want to structure a really complex HTTP REST API that is becoming hard to manage. Future work. The, we're working on improving the cache control support, adding directing and expiring expire support, uh, adding several plugins for configurations and application info, and some loggers that at the moment it does not have. So, uh, thanks, and any questions? Questions? Hello? Yeah, it works. Uh, do you have any authentication system in mind to use, I mean, auto-integrate into the request? Or you use that as a filter or something? Uh, no, at the moment, is uh, target is not managing the authentication. You have to manage it on your own. Okay. As Juan said, it's managed on the application side. Um, I think there is an implementation using you know, OAuth. You can ask Gabriel Cotelli about that. Any other question? Do you have plans or, or something uh, for a client for this kind of APIs? For? Uh, for a client for or implementing, you know, if you have plans or it includes uh, some kind of clients for Hato's uh, uh, APIs? You, you mean a client framework? Uh, yes. No, at the moment we did not have the need to use it. Uh, well, I forgot to mention it, but we even we are using it at Mercap. We have uh, one BA application that is using it, and three microservices implemented on Faro, also using it. And we did not have the need for building a, a framework on the client side. Any other question? I'm sorry to correct you on the response. There is a working uh, in progress client. Uh, it's, it's still a work in progress, so it's not uh, yet published, but it will be in the future. Okay, I was not aware of it. Any other question? Cool, so we finally made it two hours for lunch the last day. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you.